Ah! Jim Brower in studio. Oh, I feel so much better. Ooh. You know, I love I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I feel so much better. I was I was petrified. You were a little confused. I was there. gonna call out like Jimmy, you wanna think this one over, man. <laughs> you were, you were. I wouldn't I wouldn't launch missiles you even were. if it's right or wrong. It's the wrong were. nation to be shooting at. <laughs> wow. You were talking about the wrong Joe. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Brewer thought that I was uh, with the whole uh, Rogan DeRosa thing. He thought I was directing at a Rogan. I'm like, yeah. no, dude. Yeah, so I'm li yeah, I was listening, and no. all I heard was, you know, Rogan, and you don't make comments like that, and I'm, I'm surprised he did that. I'm going, oh, my God, Norton and Rogan at war? Oh, my God. Jesus no. Christ, please don't tell me that. Yeah. Jimmy loves his teeth. He's yeah, I'm not that stupid. No, he's not. I was going to call. I was going to try to reach out to Joe. Like, listen, uh, Jimmy's really good. He's very, <laughs> cool. he's a very even head guy, and I don't know what's going on, but it's just it's not good. It's not good. Save him from a coma. Yeah. <laughs> the, the guy in Goodfellas, listen, this is not good. This is not right, good. You right. two need to sit down. This is not working. Uh, Everyone's upset here. Everyone's upset. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, no, it was not Joe. Oh, God, I feel so much better. It was something that happened on his show with Joe DeRosa, and uh, that, that was about, uh, this, I probably said Joe, and you thought So De all I heard was Rogan, and then blah, 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 and DeRosa, and I, you know, when you're driving in the car and you're listening, and yeah. I even would listen to the repeat, like, oh, fuck, all right, now I'll be able to get uh, what's going on with Norton and what he's, what he's, and what you were saying, I went, you know, and Jimmy's this on, he's, he's right about this, and... I don't know how Joe's going to get I don't know how Rogan's going to get out of this one, because Jimmy sounds pretty factual. And, oh, man, this is going to get intense, because he's going to show up tomorrow and put him in a headlock or something. This is Because whatever you were saying, even whether you were right or wrong, I was already 100% your camp. <laughs> Just the way you were saying it with the facts. I'm like, I don't know what he's talking about, but he's right. But you listened to the replay and got it wrong again. I did, because I didn't get it all. <laughs> so I listened to the replay once or twice I listened to it. You're in mourning, though. Oh. We can understand. You're in mourning, yeah. Stel. You're, no, you're no, still no, no, I'm not in mourning. Man. Everyone comes out to you and says, oh, you're dead. Um, well, I mean, he was very important to you, yes. obviously. And uh, we heard the stories over the years. So when your dad passed, it was like, wow. A lot of people, a lot of people came out of the woodwork. And thank you both for reaching out. Yeah. Here's how it went down. I'm filming something in L.A., you know, some some pilot, and then um, got the call. Hey, uh, your dad's, your dad got a massive stroke. My wife called, D called. She's like, Jim, uh, he had a massive stroke. I said, okay. She said, no, this one, he's, uh, you might want to come home for this one. So... You know, I come home. Yeah, he's mangled. He can't. He can't open his eyes or talk. However, and I'm really glad this happened. When I got there, he started. You know, I first looked. I went, "Oh God, this is bad." Um, I started busting his balls like right off the bat. I said, "So you can't talk, huh?" And hearing my voice, he turned his head. And then I said, um, I'm going, Dad, you can't move your mouth or nothing? And he's trying to talk. No, listen, I don't give a shit if you can talk. Can you still use your weenie? And I swear to God, I swear to God his eyes opened up, and he started trying to smile. And I went, I have a big whore coming, a fat whore on the way. And he started, his eyes opened up, and he started, like, trying not, trying to laugh and try, and, 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 and I said, do you want black? Do you want Asian? Or a fat one? My problem is, if you have a fat one, I'm afraid she'll break your head. And he just, he, he was up. He was up and trying to move, but they said, listen, it's tube. You can keep him on the tube for a couple months. But no, nah, man, no tube. He's done. Right. And so they said, uh, all right, put him in hospice. And we're not bringing him to my house. They said he would never get better from there, right? Well, you know, he has dementia. He's 91. They said they'll give him this medicine where sometimes it works. It could take months. Like, you know, that's... No. Mm -hmm. uh, and now he's a feeding tube. That's crazy. And I have to go in there and talk about whores and money every day as much as possible right. to keep him going. I mean, yes, we're done. <clears throat> so... I bring him home, and this is this is what I tell everyone. Uh, the whole, my whole life, my biggest, 
the biggest breakdowns you have and the biggest sob sessions and the fear is all leading up to that moment. And even even when it came time, like I was watching and I, I knew it was getting worse and and uh, you know, giving him the morphine, all that jazz, the breathing starts, you're you're watching him and you know he's gonna die soon. I I didn't shower or nothing. So I just stayed there nonstop. I, brought, I got him home on Saturday night. Uh, he passed Monday night at ten. But at Monday night about nine o'clock, my nephew starts busting. My nephew's over there, he's like He's you know he's still alive because you smell. You need to shower and like everyone's laughing and joking. So I took a shower at uh, nine thirty and came out of the shower. It was like nine forty and I just came to the kitchen and my youngest daughter was like, "Oh, Dad's got it. Grandpa's got his eyes open." What? Oh no! So I went in there and it, this was the ver this was the ending. And so you know I jumped in bed and you know held him and. Talked to him the whole way through, and when he went, you sob for like 30 seconds. But I, I have to admit, a after it was over, you get this, I had this calm of, it's it's over. A relief? Yes, 100% right. relief. There, it was just, that's it. My whole fear, all my life, was so much worse Leading up to that moment, so many times I on the road I I sob like please don't let him be alone, please am I am I am I away too much should I be around should I be at home is he all right with this this lady that watches him please don't let him I just want to be there I just want to I just want to hold him it's, it's terrible to say anyone else and probably like yeah, I'll take the phone call <laughs> where with him I just wanted that moment and I got the moment and. Uh, I, I'm really settled. Now, the it's it's interesting once that happens, how everyone else is. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's got he, t t little drama. This one, <laughs> you start seeing. <clears throat> you know, maybe this guy only sees him once every three years, and he's the guy sobbing. Yeah. Uncontrollably. Uncontrollably. Bringing your sadness down to a, a lower level than where you were at. And I'm not, I never got sad. I still don't. Right. You know, once in a while, I thought I would never be able to look at a picture. I thought I, I was the one going, okay, we're going to use this picture and that picture. We're going to play that video. Now, one, one cool thing, and I think I'm going to... I'm definitely going to put it out there. It's real, because everyone that watched it was really moved by it. One of his last moments... Um, I didn't realize it. I was talking and bantering and getting heavy with him and being funny. <clears throat> I heard like a little bit of sobbing and turning on. My wife was videotaping on, on her iPad. I'm like, what, what are you doing? She's like, that was the most healing, beautiful thing. You just got to put, you just got to put that out there. I can't believe what I just watched. She's like, we should have part of hers goes, I wish the whole world saw how you took that process to the end. It would have. Because now more and more people coming up to me like, how did you do that? I'm going through that with my mom. I'm going through that with my dad. Mm. How did you go in the bed? It's it's not that. It's not bad. It's it's. Uh, I'd rather do that. You're right. gonna do what you gotta do. Yeah, I'd much rather do that. Right. Than get that freaking phone call. Right. Could he hear you when his eyes were open? You think? Oh, I think he definitely. He definitely. Because when, now when I look at the video, I see him. I see him locking in. And, and look right. in my way, and even when he'd smile. But towards the end, I learned so much from this. You know, I, I had these, I had these uh, notions of, you know, when he's gone, I'm gonna take the ashes and I'm gonna fly here and all the places we've been. And <clears throat> the minute he was gone, I realized, man, all all that stuff is just for us. It's just, it's just for us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's gone. He's out of here. It's in the abyss. It's, it's just it's just for us. People get caught up in this whole like, oh I gotta the ritual of it, yeah. I right. gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta <laughs> go to the Empire State Building and let the answer go. My father would have loved that. No, you would have loved it. Right. You're the one that loves it. I'm gonna go to Mount Everest and I, I agree with you. You know, and I uh, you don't realize it I, I think that's more for people that are unsettled. That weren't there. 
that went, damn it, I should have, I should have. Mm-hmm. Well, he would like it, and, you know, even going to a gravesite. It's all for us. I agree. It's just for us. Your mom so, is alive, right? Yeah, oh, my God. How did she handle this? Boy, did I get some repercussions after the last time I was on here. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, sorry. I don't know. I thought I had my ringer off. Sorry about that. From, um, from her? No. Sister. N- <laughs> oh, yeah, the rooster. <laughs> Oh, dude, I forgot he even did all that. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah I forgot that too. Well, let me. <laughs> I'm glad you that. Oh, man, come on. Uh, She's got to well, understand uh, well, She's got to have a sense of humor. Well, that was, that was oh, hilarious. Oh, <laughs> what happened? Oh, man, it was like the whole UN came after me. Um, For the people that weren't listening, you know, Jimmy came in here with some. <laughs> First of all, with some tapes from his mom. The tapes of the mom were heavy, right? It was amazing. And then you might have been since, saying some bad things about your sister. Yeah, since <laughs> since <laughs> since then, I forgot the whole rooster. I forgot. Every, I don't remember. I was just seeing red. I was just seeing red. Wine. Yeah, I was seeing red. Wine. Yeah, I was pissed. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so what that's re- okay. What were the repercussions? Now, <laughs> since then, my mom is much better. She's in uh, assisted living. She's totally better. She's ninety percent there. You you so thought she, you thought at the time that she had a urinary uh, she did track infection that was causing a lot more she of the did. dementia. She did right. So now she, she's she's pretty much there and better. <clears throat> they have her on great drugs. Great drugs. But now she's she takes everything under control. Like she, she everything makes sense. Mm-hmm. However, um, she thinks she's in rehab. She thinks she's like getting rehab. I gotta get my apartment back. Like yeah, no, that's no. You're here for this is it. You're here. But she's clear. Mm-hmm. She's she's clear. Maybe ten fifteen percent uh, dementia. Now. Not bad. No, not at all. Not compared to the tapes we played last time. And then. The whole family came to me and they're like, listen, the radio thing was bad news. And I was still, I was still really mad. I'm like, well, you know, I I got mugged, and people don't like the way the mugger is reacting. What is that? All? Nah, he said some things. He said some things. We got some things. We got to sit down. We got to fix yeah. this thing. Disrespect him a little bit. Nah, he little said bit, yeah, a little, little bit, bit, a little bit. Outside of family's one thing. Yeah, you gotta. Right. So I apologized to. Eh, I mean, I went down the line. I went from. From nieces to nephew, you name it, I went to one, every single individual. Like, ah, I shouldn't have put that, I shouldn't put that, and I shouldn't have put that. Um, so that was all mended. And then since then, mm. oh, dude. Remember I was talking about the other one? Yeah. <sighs> there, there was two There was two sisters. One of my sister. Yeah. Now, we're not going to go into, well, I shouldn't bring this, because we're going to go into... I don't want this to become vague. a. Yeah, vague. Do we owe you an apology? No. <laughs> okay. Good. No, no, no. Because <laughs> it was crazy. But radio. everything <laughs> happened after that freaking show. <laughs> about a week, le- about a week and a half later, yeah. uh, later, my mom's in the uh, assistant living, and she's okay. My one sister gets diagnosed stage four lung. The cancer's in her neck. It's wrapped around her. It's in her. It's on her spine. It's that. Yeah, she's it's, right. It's the blasting her with chemo and this and that. She just broke her hip. But we haven't told my mother yet. We're gonna. You know, we'll see how this plays out. Stage four. Yes, stage four. So that's that's heavy. How old is she? She's fifty nine. Oh. Yeah. You know, smoking, smoking. So it's one of those. Uh, wow, oh, sorry to hear, man. Well, you know, what do you, you know, what can you do? So you just sit there and go. Phew. So everyone's just grasping for straws. Like, hey, go see this guy in India. Go see, uh, there's someone in Iowa that was this and that. And, you know, you just do what you can. How's she handling it? She's phenomenal. She's got her hopes high and she's going to make it. That's her uh, thing, and you know that's the way everyone looks at it. Oh, people stage four, you make it, you can make it. 
Um, so, you know, they're all... All that fell down after that. Jesus. Yeah. Holy berserker. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that so, is heavy. Yeah, it's all heavy, but uh, I'm playing the Motorhead Cruise. No, dude, I'm looking for a laugh. That's very funny. Uh, no, I'm actually psyched to hear that. <laughs> you're insane. You're fucking like, crazy. where do you go you're after crazy. that? Where do you go after that? No, seriously, don't. No, don't I, I was actually there. looking to see if that was on there. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I thought yeah. it was a real thing. No, Why no, no, no. Like well, a, no, it like is a real thing, but that's not what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I'm not here for that. So, but why yeah. do you have to apologize to nieces and nephews? Oh, I guess because it was their parents you were kind of. Yes. Got it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I So see. I do okay. what I had to do. You know, you, 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 still, you do what, what we've said over the years. You go, hey, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. So I, you, you, you got to say, I right, pump it up for the radio, you know. That, that's and, always and been my I, out I over did, the years. I was hopped up, and like, I said, I, I pumped it up for the radio. I Don't did. worry about it. I forgot the rooster thing. That was kind of. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. <laughs> so, anyway. We're uh, we're, stro we're we're striving along, man. We're now, striving along. Now your wife, um, yeah, yeah, filmed the last moments of your dad's life. Then, no, or pretty close. About the day before, and it was um, wow. It's just so funny. Even to the end of his death, the only thing that kept him going was whores and money. You mentioned whores, he'd light up. You mentioned money, he'd light up. Because then I started, but you know, the day before, and he was still kind of. You think he was a conscious. Mm. Because he would do certain things he'd react to, and he'd look over at me. I would say, you know, I'd start going, "Dad, if you can get, if you can get a boner, I'll give you fifteen hundred dollars cash right now." And he would, you'd see, he's just the way we'd banter. He his mouth was open, and he opened his eyes, he look in my direction, and I say things like, "Okay, if I put you on a bicycle." Can you just, if you just stand the bike for a second, keep your balance, I'll give you $500 cash right now. If I bring this horror in, I got a horror outside right now. I'm going to bring her in. If you could just look at her, that stuff, he yeah. still would laugh. Not laugh. But yeah. You know, his way of laughing was, uh, <laughs> you know, that was the laughing. But wow. yeah, whores and money, whores and money. Did you tell your mother that he died or no? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yeah. I thought that. Now that was interesting too. Is um, right before, right before he died, um, my mom, who I thought was delusional by this, right before I, I went on like a, I went away for a little while, and before I went away, I uh, made sure the guy, the the nurse that looks after my dad, would at least pick up my mom while I was away because no one's visiting her. So. I came home for two days in between all this, and my ma, I take her to coffee in town, and um, she goes, you know, I, I saw you, I saw dad, and we, we made amends, it was good, we danced, well, you danced, she goes, yeah, he was, he was in the wheelchair, and I get him, we played Frank Sinatra, and I said I loved him, and I said we should move in together, and, and end our lives together, and, and he said he loved me, and I said, and I thought, yeah, okay, uh, sure, yeah, no, yes, okay. What are we on? Triathlon? This stuff's good. Right. And now I'm in L.A. I get the call about my dad. I fly home. When I get home to see him in the hospital, the nurse is there. And just before she, she's like, Jeannie, you're not going to believe. I know tell you what happened. And she texts me a picture of my mom and dad where my mom's holding my father she goes oh my god i never see james do this uh, she goes doris your mom i turn on frank sinatra she got up dance you got your father get up and he's shrugging his shoulders they're saying they love each other and they said they should spend their i said i thought she was delusional wow. she was, this really went down because wow. she told me and i didn't i didn't believe this at all yeah. she's like no no and james was really coherent with her and wow. so really so that was kind of a i think that was another bizarre okay closure even for me yeah sure where where now right before it happened those two it's your parents she went to my dad made a man so she sat with him too not to the very end 
but uh, as much as she could, because right. she does, you know, turn into a werewolf about six, seven o'clock. Yeah. She's got this sundowning thing, and hair starts growing on her <laughs> chin, and she starts howling at the moon. That's a real thing, huh? I've heard about it over yeah, the years. Yeah, sundown. It's so weird. It's howling at the moon. As soon as the sun goes down, man. And they all say the it's get... really, it's the moon. It's some weird access. It is some weird energy. I mean, no one can explain it. Why does it happen to them at that time? Right. And then the next morning, they're relatively better. Yeah, they get up and there they go. Was so, your mom emotional when he passed? Or? No, not at all. Not, not at all. And then the weird stuff happens is my dad had three... Three blood kids. I'm a blood kid, too. Where you start running into weirdness is now you have to... Li you know, I don't want anything to do with listing all the parents, the kids and the grandkids and this and that and the bing and the bang. Um, so you get little weird things like I didn't like being named a stepchild. <clears throat> you know, I started hearing that at the wake. Like, oh, you know, he's, he's, he's mentioned the stepchildren. I'm like... Well, what? Well, legally, that's right. Like, what do you want me to do? Right. Do you feel like you're a child? Because if you do, well, then you're a child. Right. It's what you feel. If I'm if I'm having a wedding, and I hire two best men, the reason why I hired two best men because I knew the one guy's really my best man, but the other guy, he's going to be like, I can't believe you didn't invite me to be your best man. <laughs> but the guy who's the other best man knows. Right. I'm the real best of man. Course. You know, if you if you right. have a stepmother or father, and it's your parents growing up, and it's over, like he left his stepchild, I'm not gonna be offended by that because I know in my heart, whatever, eh, I was a child. Right? They treat me like that. Just but, making it official. People get yeah. people get all yeah. banged out. I was and, as much a son to him as you and Mike. <laughs> and, and that's and that's I heard those. I'm I'm on my house on Saturday, and I hear that going on. Right. I'm like. Really? This is where you're at now? All right. Well, I, I, I can't get into all that, and mm. I hope you feel better, but I'm not getting into that. That's just no, unnecessary drama. Unnecessary roughness. That's unnecessary what, roughness. That's just what it says on the card or in the paper. It doesn't really matter. Whatever. Matter. You know what's really funny, too? In the prayer card, we, we would laugh because on his prayer card, you know, if you go to a funeral, there's a prayer card. Right. You walk in, there's a, so people would pick up the prayer cards, a picture of them, but on the back were... All his sayings. So anyone like really religious, or whatever, we're like, look at this. Someone's kind of, because on the back it say, "Go get laid, <laughs> go play with your weenie, go shit in your hat, go fuck yourself." So was, some back. of the some of the best parts of the funeral was waiting. Like, oh, this guy's this, these people are really cat. Like, they'll watch this, and you see them pick up the car and then turn, and they go from tears like, oh my god, <laughs> this is so. Oh my god, <sighs> go fuck yourself. Why would you? <laughs> and then um, there was there was also at the way now at my house a bag. But the most emotional part was the navy showing up. Because he was a World War II vet and bagpipers and stuff like that. So at my house now, we're having a party. I'm playing Johnny Cash and all that jazz. You know, these people are upset because of whatever was on a piece of paper. And these people, whatever. For the most part, everyone's having a great time. But we started off the whole thing. I took me and his two other sons. And my father would start off every party like this, especially after he caught a buzz. So we got, we round everyone up, and I literally got repercussions for like two or three people from for doing this. But it's the two, three people you go, you know, I, I'm not going to see you again, so I really don't care. And you fully expected it anyway. Yeah, I'm, I already expected it. Like, like, right, you know, know these two are going to I'm not going to see you again anyway, Whatever. so right. I don't know what to tell you. And it wasn't for you anyway. So <laughs> everyone gathers around his kids and went, listen. If you have kids, I'm already I'm already apologizing. So I'm just telling you right now, you're going to cover their ears. And we know, you know, this is my this is our father, a great man, blah blah blah, funniest person we ever knew. We're, let's start off the party the way he'd always want to start off the party. And <laughs> we go, here's James Brewer, you know, born in '23, gone in 2000. What he would always like, let's give him a nice hymn. And we and what he would always do, he'd go. Like he'd go to what's your name, Jimmy? Jimmy Norton. Everybody, this is Jim Norton, and we're gonna welcome him with a nice hymn. And you go him, him, fuck 
him. <laughs> now go get you something to drink, asshole, and lay your weapons on the table. What's and wrong they, with that? And, oh, my God. So half the place is... Half place doesn't know what's going on because we're going to him. We're like, him. And we got to the fuck him. The whole place just erupted. Except for the, you know, two or three. Like, oh, my God. That is just, you don't say fuck him at a funeral. I mean, that's just horrible. It's a World War II vet. They're right, saying right, fuck right. him. I mean, I liked it until that part. Right. Yeah. Well, no, I loved it to that part because I realized you're not at that. Ever Did be they seen again? Voice their objections to you, or you heard through third to me. parties? Ew. To me. To you. I really enjoyed, it, except for that part. They, no. Goodbye. I, uh, yeah. Did they you just, enjoy the ribs and chicken? Good. Yeah. Get out of here. Right. They they couldn't keep it to themselves. <laughs> Get out of here, just man. Keep it to yourself. Just keep it yourself, retard. Uh, the no. conversation on the way home. I couldn't believe I couldn't either. That's, That's fine. Just not appropriate. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not appropriate. <laughs> right. I get off on that, though. I really get off on but that. To have I to enjoy that stuff. But to have to tell Brewer. It's just Ugh, douchey. God. You know, I that like that, douchey. though. I'd rather come tell me. Really? Yeah, because then well, at you least... Know they're, you know they're talking, but it's like, all right. I like that. I get off on that stuff. You learn a lot about death when you go through it, man. It's kind of... I feel good. I'm ready, for, I'm ready to take on... Some, I shouldn't say that. You, you feel good about death? No, no, no. Well... well it's uh, your whole life. I mean, you lost your dad. When you lose your dad, your your life starts changing in perspectives, and you just you're looking at everything differently. And it just it brings you closer to we are not immortal, and right. we are leaving. Right. No matter how many operations you want, no matter what kind of diet we're on, no matter what, it, you know, you turn the page. There's your name. That's it. You're it's it's your day. Where do we go though? That's a great question, and as my dad always said, what did he think? Yeah. You're not ever gonna be answered because none of these assholes have come back to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's what he'd always say. And I'm like, Dad, you don't believe in God? And he's like, No, I don't. I said, You don't think like you go into at least a, a an energy or a spiritual world? He goes. Well, if you do, you don't come. None of you, nobody's come back to talk about it. <laughs> so who gives a shit? What is it, a place up there with four four hundred billion people fucking dressed in eighteen hundred? <laughs> Jesus Christ! So, and, and, but he's also a guy that watched people get slaughtered mm -hmm. and slaughtered. So it's just they have a who knows? Man, none of us know. I could sit here and. Um, you know, we could all. T that's that's what makes me nuts about debates, religious debates, and right. You know, if if Jesus puts you in a great spot, great. If uh, Bob Marley puts you in a great spot, great. If you're if you're tree, what about ISIS? What's ISIS? <laughs> they're the group of naughty boys. Uh, they're Islamic. They're very naughty. They're fairly. They're they're a little more radical than I care for. Oh, the new beheaders, lopping heads yeah. off. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. I, like I said, I don't watch news anymore and all that jazz. Let me ask some. All right, I, I'm just going on a on a thing here. Okay. Who, 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 no disrespect to any of the families involved. None whatsoever. What we we doing there? Yeah. If if I say if you go down this alleyway, there's people that will possibly behead you and rape you with raging bulls and torture you for a week. Oh, I've got to report that and fix that. Uh, if you go down this street, you're potentially going to be anally raped. Oh, well, let me go report on it. Or, or walk down that street backwards. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me walk down the street backwards and see what's going on. Down. And, <laughs> and people are forgetting these savages have been... This ain't nothing new. They behead... Someone's getting beheaded right now. Every day. They've been beheading since the beginning of time. They behead their own. They behead children. They behead everybody. They, they're, they are primal monkeys. So, but once you see a video, that's when people are like, oh my God. Well, it's, it's been, ha what about all the other videos? Now, because it's a, a citizen that belongs here. Or in in England or whatever you see it, it's disturbing. It makes you want to go there. But what about when they beheaded one of their own children? What about when they beheaded one of their own? What 
Where are you then? You don't care? Reporters are a weird breed, man. The fact that they knowingly go there. Why would you do that? That's, that's just I, don't a, know why I mean, there's a that. bravery to it, like, but it's just, they were kidnapped in Syria and brought over. Why are you in Syria? Yeah. Why in your right mind? You couldn't pay me a billion dollars to go to Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Israel, Palestine, Detroit, Detroit, <laughs> parts of Miami, <laughs> Newark. <laughs> I mean, that's enough. You know, it's like okay. I went to uh, downtown Detroit, and oh my god, I got I got mugged and my neck st slid open, and now the whole country saw the video, and they want to know. Well, where were you? The 400 billion other times it happened. It's that is the power of media and what they want. Listen, there's an agenda. Don't think for one second the agenda is to rally up because they eventually want to storm over there, blow people up or get oil or whatever the agenda is. They need you to see that. So you go, yes, they, let's go over there. Right. I support this. I support. I now support this. But at the end, Syria, Egypt, unless, unless they're like it's a report, and again, no disrespect. I mean, it's horror for a family member to go through that. And I'm not even a family member, and I watch that. And I even go darker. I'm like, I want to see the uncut video. Oh, you you watch those videos? I try to. I don't know if they I exist. Can't. I, I I know I know what's going on. I just but can't do it to myself. It's all there already. Right. It's, here's them beheading one of their own. This right. is not something new. They've been doing this forever. It's like saying, all right, the American Indians. Oh my <laughs> God, they're burying you up to your neck and they're tossing stones at you. These savage. This is this is nothing new. It's just you know people. It's it, what what do you want to go over there now? Even less than before. Except what what in your, what are you reporting on? What well, do you, oh they're killing themselves. All right. Well, what are you gonna do? I'll tell you the big part of the story is the fact that the guy doing the cutting. Speaks English. Normally, it's 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 translated. So you'll have like you know right. you don't just. It's harder to connect to what they're saying. But now this guy who's Brit, that sounds like somebody I've spoken to, a British person. You know, it, it's much more relatable now that it's an American with a British accent lopping his head off and for some reason it's just caught everybody's attention and the fact that they're reporters reporters used to be the, the, the group that people leave alone like they would wear badges that say press correct people wouldn't kill them or would not try to kill them right but now that they're actually being used and, and aid workers mm -hmm. it's almost like if a soldier gets beheaded people are like well that's a soldier soldier has a weapon and soldiers know the risk you know they're crazy yes. and brave but they know the risk these are guys Aid workers to me are fucking crazier than anybody because like you're I just agree. going over there to be helpful. Like right. they're just genuinely yeah. nice. Right. Like, right. What the, like and it's it, it, even goes to Uganda. It's <laughs> right. crazy to help the children. <laughs> even Women are being raped. It's you know. even though it's stupid to go there, and they are. I, I say morons. For, there is something they're doing that, like, God, there is a goodness in you to really want to go and help people in that situation. But I don't what, get. Are you, what are you helping? Are you bringing an army? What are you helping? You're going to write yeah. something. That's going to change the world to make uh, everyone like everyone know, like I I'm I'm always skeptical. The art is, listen, people that watch news and all that. No one's ever takes a seat back and go, what's the real agenda? What is the real agenda of showing that video? What's the agenda? If 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 you didn't think if you didn't have anything against that, if you went, all right. Here, it's like, for instance, it's the bully. If I come to you and go, eh, I'm going to fucking bat a bat, and, I'm and you start ignoring me, I have no power. So if that video is never shown or never traumatized, then it's fucking ignored, and their mission is shut down. Well, the agenda the of the guys doing it, ISIS's agenda, is they would probably rather not be making those videos to begin with. They're making them simply because th their argument is that the U.S. has interfered with what they're doing. They want to be left alone. They want the U.S. Out. out of there. They want us to out. stay away and let them do whatever they want to do over there. So when they when we show the videos, the uh, we're, they're actually... 
they, they want this to scare the Americans away. They don't want this to bring the Americans in. They want us gone. So they're afraid that... But, but, they gotta, but, but, right. what's happening? Yeah, they got to think that this wait, is going to piss wait. us oh, off. We, to we've a... been talking about going over there, correct? Well, yeah, what's happening is that they don't understand the American people as well as they think they do. And they don't understand that these beheadings make people... People would be much more likely to go, look, just stay away. Mind our business. But then when you see it like that, then a lot of Americans are going, you know what? We re I really want those people killed. Aha. Uh -huh. So therefore, showing the videos riles up the camp here to go, let's go over there. Now, what's over there that's super important to well, be there? Well, it does rile the camp up. The only thing is they're the ones posting it. It's not like, I know what you mean, but the Americans aren't Wag the ones showing them necessarily. the dog. Yeah, but the Americans, we're not the ones putting them up. It's the, in social media now, there's so many ways for them to get these videos out. They used to be they'd be sent to Al Jazeera, but now they're putting them on YouTube. They're purposefully not showing the actual head coming off because this way everyone will it's leave the videos up. Exactly, and you still can't see them. You still can't hunt them what, down. No, I, I don't even know if they them. exist. You Jim, can't hunt them down. What is the motive of ISIS, though, by, you know, they they got to think we're going to get involved be, because we're seeing these videos. And why would you what, want us involved? Exactly. Yeah, so why, what's would I, their, why would ISIS go, oh, right. I, I know we lop a few heads off and that's going to make uh, America stay away. There's no fucking way. They're not exactly. that dumb. They're not that dumb. Exactly. They, they, they are that dumb. You think they're that they're dumb? They're not that dumb. dumb. They are because they, what's happening is we already, we're already we doing airstrikes. The Americans are already doing airstrikes. Right, right. So their thing is... I'm not saying ISIS is right, but I mean, this no, is No, no, no. This is why it's called want, just a but, conversation. Yeah, but the last think, thing they want is us involved. But you think they're convinced that, that showing these videos are going to make us stay away? I, I can't imagine that. No way. I think they're in a position where once American air power starts and you're, you're getting bombed, that's bad fucking news. So they're, they're backs against the wall to a certain degree. Knowing that we're involved with our, with our air force is, is a nightmare for them. So what else can, in their minds, what can we do to make this a personal, how can we get them to back off turn the people against them the only way they probably think they can turn american citizens can see that. against the military doing what it's already doing is by making it so personal right. and showing our own being slaughtered like i guess that's the, but they don't understand that, that that makes americans a lot angrier right. sure because they they think that we're paper tigers like after after the clinton administration pulled remember black hawk down yeah, yeah. The, all the americans got pulled out of mogadishu and all that right. stuff so they think that by showing a few dead american people our military will run away right and they don't understand that that really does upset the american public and, and we are a lot more bloodthirsty than they think we are. And we're a lot more vindictive. We also than hate, they think we just we are. hate, no matter what anyone says, there is a pure underlying, uh, uh, and, you know, it, it just is what it is. You can't tell me 95, 98% of uh, white America doesn't pull into a gas station or whatever, and there's just a little party going, uh, you know what? If anything went down, man, yeah, I got my eye on you. I got oh, my eye on you. Suspicion. So we, we, we just, uh, that reason already, we just despise, almost looking for a reason just to. You think they want to just get rid of the older generation? Like, just bomb the whole goddamn Turn it into a parking lot. Turn it into a parking lot. <laughs> just just nuclearize the whole goddamn thing. Do and you, they need what? Go ahead. Do, I, I just want to, do you think they want to drag us in? To maybe, ISIS? Yeah, no. to drag us into that region to maybe, you know, maybe it, it helps their numbers. Where, where's this happening? In uh, Iraq. In Iraq. Yeah. That's the last thing oh, they so we go back ISIS. to Iraq. Yeah, I don't think ISIS wants us involved, though. It, it's just, for them, they, they want to take over. It's pretty over. cocky to think that we're going to stop just because we see a couple videos. Well, you the, know, as soon as we leave, there are people, but what happens is you leave, when you, when you do that, the, you leave and then other people groups rush in and a lot of the Iraqi military threw down their weapons a lot a lot of the Iraqis didn't want to fight ISIS because they're fucking vicious right so what happens is they're they're actually gaining ground right. and once they start gaining ground then the American fucking military comes in and starts bombing their right, position well, me, which is a problem let me ask you something because I've talked to some Iraqi soldiers from here Iraqi vets or in Afghanistan vets they I shouldn't speak on behalf of them. I'm just talking about two individuals I spoke with. They are so pissed and irate that they went in, did the job, then left, and then supposedly let all this happen. So their motive to go back is pretty dark and 
Like, why would you do that to the soldiers that already went there, did what they had to do, right. um, put their families through that, put their son through that, their wife through that, their nieces, their nephews, their best friends, four or five trips to Iraq, did everything they had to do, and now you're pulling out, you know, you pull out, and then you supposedly let this happen. Uh, I thought the soldiers did everything good, they could have done, though. Like they, they did. I mean, they trained the Iraqi right. soldiers, armed them. You know, it's it's like you can it pisses only, them off, though. Piss, these oh, two individuals were pissed. But you can only make people want to defend their country or willing to defend their country so and much. Then, all right, so there's there's a thing. Well, then if they can't, I mean, what the what do you, what do you need over there? It's not our business. What do you, what do you think ISIS is going to get nuclear weapons? Let them. I mean, what are you going to do? Let the rest of the world go. These guys are savages. They're killing all the Iraqi people. And if the old, if the other Arabs don't step in, then let them step. This is why I always say, what's the real agenda? Because if there, there's got to be plan A, B, C, D. If there's no oil there and there's no money to be made, are we this involved? Because at the end of the day, all we have to fear is people coming here. And nuclear weapons. If ISIS, all they have is beheaders, what the fuck are we afraid of? It's well funded. They let got a them, lot of money. Let yeah. them, let them do what they got to do. If the Iraqis can't, just let that region take care of itself I, until there's nuclear weapons pointed at Wisconsin, Illinois, New York, California. What does big bad America have to worry about? I think they're worried more about suitcase nukes at this point than that. Just, just I think instead of and and this has been going fired. on since 1960, yeah. mm -hmm. since Russia. So it's like, what are you going to, I mean, the Russians knew better, though. They Russians weren't suicidal. Even though the Russians were the big red enemy, they were smart people. And they, they kind of knew they were like you know, a military country like we are. They weren't religiously fanatic. Religious fanatic is a little scarier, I think. You don't think the rest of the world, you really don't think the rest of the world, like Russia, China, blah, blah, has their eye on everything? All oh, the Russians do, yeah. And do you, sure, really yeah. Th you really think, if, if let's say the ISIS is not smart, the rest of the world's that dumb to go, We're, you know, they do, and they're not going to tell it. Like, I just want to let you know, because... If they were to do a suitcase nuclear bomb, you don't think Britain then would be like, Australia, the rest of the world, would be like, oh, it's on, it's on. Our allies would because sure. now, because because now, if they're that crazy enough to do the U.S., they may be crazy enough to do that to us. Right now, we got to put a fuck it in Russia. Russia don't fuck around. They just like it's they just. They want it, they come take it. They all want to see the U.S. get a smack, though. Like, yes, that's true. There's a really weird emotion that people have since the Soviets are no longer what they were, that the U.S. gets a smack, and people are kind of happy about that. That's true. On mm. a weird level. Not even you on know, they is, hate us. It's, it's just it's, to see the bully get beat it, down. It's and the bully. That's what they look at us. It's the kid. I always said this. It's the kid. Be careful. We're the rich kids on the block. Now, unfortunately, when the rich kid came down the avenue of school, if you remember, and I'm not saying this is what we are, but this is what the world perceives us as. We're playing a... And the motherfucker the Fuck you, the fuck you, motherfucker! You ass! And we're throwing the Whopper rappers all over the street. We get out, we're pissing on the grass. Where the fuck... Now... Eventually, and when you used to watch that kid, you're like, I hate that fucking, yeah, but his father's so and so. But eventually, what would happen is a group of six, seven kids would go, You slash the tires, you bump him from it. When he gets out of the right. car, you jump him, then you smash the window, and then we'll do this. And it, it turns into a group, a, effort, yeah. a group <laughs> rat pack. And we that's. I'm more scared of that. We got David from Israel. He's saying you're completely wrong, Mr. Brewer. Uh, about David, what? Well, let's find out. He's, well, a, he's, it, it, he's a regular. Jimmy Norton, not Mr. Brewer. Huh? I was actually talking about Jimmy. Norton. Okay. About Jimmy. Oh, Norton. Oh, I feel so much better. Oh, 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 oh. I apologize. <laughs> I feel so much better. What do you got? Hi, David. Good morning. Jimmy, I think you're completely wrong. They, they openly say that they want to raise their flag on the White House. They're trying to start intimidating us right now. They want to engage us in war. 
they're, they're fucked up in the head. If, if yeah. They don't mind dying. They don't mind the bombs coming over. They're overly happy to die for their cause. And, and uh, I know the White House comment, David. I, I know I'm aware of that comment they made. But I think in that in that situation, that's just posturing and shit talking. I think the real motive is to stop the airstrikes because there's no way, even if they want to go to war with the U.S. eventually, when they're when they're steamrolling into Iraq, the last thing they need is the U.S. military bombing them. It doesn't help you're their not cause. About, you're not talking about rational, sane people. You're, you're an American that has logic. You're not, you're not dealing with logical people. Well, hold on. They're not logical. Didn't they wait till the U.S. military was gone before they came in? They're not that because, stupid. Because they, because they couldn't get in, because they, they, they didn't have the power. But once they're in and they think that they, they're all about pride and about, uh, about their perceived image. They're, they're not talking about logic. Uh, I know I believe it was in the 67 war when Israel wiped out Egypt. Egypt was telling all the other countries that they wiped out Israel. And everybody knew they were lying. It's in their, it's in their culture. You know what? If I can, on, on a very small level, I have dealt with um, people from a different culture that have been a pain in the balls, and all they're about is avenging, and they're so stupid, and they're so that they, they don't see the law, they don't see the situation they're in, they're so full of pride, and they're so full of the re everyone. It's almost like a nar I understand what this guy's saying to a degree. It's such a narcissist, um, sociopathic thought process that they believe I, I see it in just a certain individuals that I deal with like they really have no concept of what's it's it's almost like I'll give you a great example um, this person's mad because I called the cops but he's not mad because he came and he punched me in the face right he doesn't get well that's why the cops are there well no you how dare you send the cops to me like, just, are you a moron? You punched me in the face. Right, but he's he's mad when the cops show up. And he yes. doesn't want the cops to show up. Because right. the cops showing no, up. No, but you mean, it's, it's just about pride. Dana, I know what you're saying. Dana, I understand what you're saying. I do understand that mentality. And I know why you're saying what you're saying. I just don't agree with you. I don't think, as much as they can be, they're extremists. And they're, I don't think they're, they want the U.S. military involved because if we're not involved then they are freer to do what they want to do over there because they think they no, have Syrian no, support. You know, you know, they, they think that their God is with them and they think that they will be victorious against America. They're so convinced that what they're doing is right that they have no problem open to the world to do it and they think that, that now is the time that their God gave them the uh, right to take over the world and they are if you speak to these real jihadis they <laughs> honestly honestly He's right. in their heart that they will take over the entire world. Yeah. Yes. And they really believe they'll take over the U.S. So you think that while they're marching into Iraq, and they're actually winning some battles and gaining some ground, what they're saying is, let's bring in the U.S. military again. I'm not just saying that, but they're starting a psychological warfare. They're trying to scare the shit out of us now so that there'll be less resistance. Did we bomb first, or did they behead first? I mean, in this particular group of people, starting with James Foley, the reporter. Mm. I believe we bombed first. Okay, go. so what they're doing is, it's a, I'm not, and I'm not using root cause arguments saying we deserve it. I don't mean that. I'll give, I'm only saying Jimmy strategically, that's why they're doing it. They didn't do it and then say, come get us. They did it, and the message was clear. He gave the message. Obama, get up. And I'm not saying that we should listen to it, but I'm saying their motives, he didn't say that. He said... Stop interfering with Islamic affairs. You're attacking all Muslims. They're trying to back the U.S. off. That's interesting because back to the other point I was saying, at the same point, I've had these individuals who are, who are, who are just, they're, they're brainwashed. It's all about ego, whatever. When their back was against the wall, they went to very drastic measures yeah. to try to install fear because their back was, they had, they're like, they're running out of, they're running out of things to do to get out of the situation because they're mm -hmm. starting to realize they're in trouble. So they've done some pretty dumb things to actually get them more in trouble. Right. So th that makes sense too. At the end of the day, man, thanks, just, David. Just Thank you, David. Go mow right. your lawn and don't get all hopped up. Don't watch the news. Yeah. Don't watch the news, well, we don't bro. Have lawns Wait till it's problem. What? There's no lawns over there. That's the problem. It's all sad. <laughs> <laughs> I would that takes up a lot of your day. It sure does. Taking care I of your lawn. Israeli, Israel's badass, man. Yeah.
They pr- are pretty much bad Let's, ass. Uh, we got a vet. He wants in badly. Jay in Buffalo, go ahead. Jim Brewer in studio. Hey, anyone that cares for animals. Hello, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about like why at least Iraqi vets are angry about what's going on and why I would love to go back. Mm. Not that I have a death wish or anything like that. Right. It's just the the, the the people that are suffering the most over there now are the Kurds in northern Iraq and parts of Syria and Turkey. They helped us immensely mm. um, uh, during the Iraq war, and I kind of feel like we're turning our backs on them because they're the ones that are taking the brunt of of the uh, you know the, the the fighting from ISIS, and uh, we we didn't really equip. Well, we equipped the, the Iraqi army, you know, with equipment and, and gear and stuff like that. But they don't have the same mentality that we do. And I think it would have taken longer to kind of instill how to fight, why to, you know, why you should fight and how to fight the enemy. Um, it's just we we're handcuffed so much with what we were able to do with the Iraqi army. There, I mean, there's so much that the press hasn't talked about or, or never talked about how we would give them you know, $5 million in a particular piece of equipment that they had no idea how to operate because it was in English. <laughs> and uh, a lot of those guys are illiterate over there. And so you give them this high-tech equipment, they don't know what to do with it, so they're not going to use it. They're used to just having, you know, uh, AK-47, and that's it. That's we give them all this high-tech equipment, like, look look what we're doing for the Iraqi army. They're, they were selling it as soon as we would give it to them. We um, we couldn't translate we That's couldn't translate the instructions uh, instruction manuals for them, dude. But to listen to what he's saying. It's They're almost like it. it's almost like right. someone just bought me this amazing. Oh, oh my God, it's an right. Xbox Nine for it, and and I have this at my house. Right. I don't know how to fucking. You you gotta give me three days to right, right. three days to figure this shit out. I mean, yeah, you, they need a translation. This guy's talking about tanks and of course heat missiles and listen heat. Right. How do you say he not Rocky? They have no concept. It's like it, it would be like aliens giving us right. ray guns and UFOs. Like here, use this. Like, right. How the hell do you use this? How do you drive a tank? Well, completely foreign to them. Well, who fucked that up? Who thought it would be a good idea to give them all this, uh, you know, state of the art stuff? I don't know. We don't even have it anymore. They got it looks good on press, no? Well, it sure does. It, look it in the papers. It, it looks good. It's like a political right. handshake. Like, yeah, the money right. Right. Yeah. Hey, we gave him some nice shit. Thank Things look say. good. Uh, the boys did a good job. We gave him some nice toys. They're good. Hey, look at the tanks we gave these guys. Look, look at this. Wait, wait, we gave some planes. <laughs> look, at things are loud and scary. Watch how they blow things up. <laughs> She's amazing. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, it's for you. Don't take shit from nobody. These guys did a good job. Hey, Forget salute. About. Salute. Forget about it. To the Iraqis. Him, him, <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, yeah, we, man. We got to take a break. Uh, Brewer's here. Good discussion. Yeah. It's good discussion. And isn't it good? To, like, you have to talk, talk. There's no fighting. There's yeah. like, if you watch p- politics TV. Oh, they don't want to listen to the other side. They scream and fight and they kill each other. They, 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 there's always an agenda. It's, it's all just, sound bites. That's why they have five, they just, have ten seconds to make a point and then right. they're on to the next guy. Right. It's good to just, just And they don't talk. even listen to the other guy. They're just waiting for their turn to talk. And I know it's yeah. terrible to say, at the end of the day, until you're on my lawn, I really don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. It's terrible, but it's just me. It's just me. Jim Brewer, what are we uh, promoting today? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to tour. I can't, I can't promote right now. Oh, on my website. On. JimBrewer.com. B-R-E-U-E-R. JimBrewer.com for dates, DVDs, books, CDs, and uh, whatnot. We're going to continue with Jim. Stay there. Yeah, we're back. Jim Brewer in studio. Wow, we just had a heavy discussion outside the, uh, outside the studio because... It brought back a lot of memories of my dad's death about 10 years ago, and I was, I was asking uh, Jimmy if some of these things happened to him. And one being, you know, at the end of someone's life, if you're there for it, I don't really recommend it, by the way. I've told people I don't really. I do. You do? I, it's, Absolutely. It's kind of creepy. And, and No, I think it's. I think you learn a lot. You think? Yeah. Go ahead. Finish what you can say. I was going to say, uh, at the end of someone's life, uh, they don't tell you. They start breathing a lot. Uh, really heavy. <laughs> 
Oh. Yeah, and that's your body basically saying, "Fuck, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, we're not sick. We want to keep fucking living." It's it's yeah. unbelievable. I when that breathing you- starts getting heavy, they all, they'll tell you, "Yep, here here it comes," because this is pretty much the last thing the body's doing is it's doing everything to try to survive. Is what happens. Yeah, and they and when hospice came over, they come over. And like, yeah, start giving him more morphine and make him comfortable and make him really come. That's their very nice way of saying, yeah, he's he's on it. the body's on the way out. Right. But and I told you the one two things what you said is uh, the one thing is the sad part is you see the will of he did want to like he didn't want to die. Right. You know, it, and when I see his eyes, he had that will of. I really don't want to go. Right. I know I have to. Right. But I don't want to go right now. Right. That's the only, like, we. I mean, but none of us do. Well, I shouldn't say that. I've heard people yeah. going, I'm at peace and I'm ready to go or go home the Lord or wherever. Right. Gonna go. Um, but you brought up something really interesting, Ope. You said um, when your father, say, say that point, and and. Because well, well, I felt the same exact way. Well, first of all, yeah, I was there when my dad died. And the one thing I asked Jimmy is if you notice the body drastically changes as soon as they die. I mean, drastically, the skin starts turning uh, just a grayish green yes. almost immediately. Yep. And then um, within seconds of my dad dying, I went, I looked at my dad and went, oh, my God, that's not him anymore. Yeah. Even though you recognize him as, as this is his body. Whatever made him my dad, his consciousness, was long gone. And then I felt no attachment to the body in the room. Me? None whatsoever. I almost was, I jokingly said to you, I, you pretty much want to go to the doctors and nurses and go, all right, well, I'll throw it in the dumpster because this is not him anymore whatsoever. There's I, no attachment. I was going to feed him to the coyotes. I was going to stick him <laughs> in the back, see if the raccoons right. and the coyotes want to start nibbling. But... No, I. But that makes you think about some things because, mm-hmm. it, I mean, it, he was whatever made him him. I know uh, ugh, well, it's because he died. No, I can't explain it. And I can't either. Was, he he was gone. He was out of there. Whatever is next, even if it's nothing, he was completely gone. It's like right now we all feel an energy or a sp- sp- whatever you call it, a spirit amongst us. Right? We may not even be talking. Sexual tension. <laughs> 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 and that's sure yeah, Jimmy, exactly. okay, all right i'll take that and um the minute you do see death and you hear the last breath just like you said i i, I said you know i held him i listened to the breath and when it was gone you let, i let out maybe a primal like ah! mm-hmm. and then as soon as i went away i looked at him and i went it is just a body like it was he was gone yeah there was no he's i feel his energy in the room right or he's hovering above us looking uh, just gone immediate. disappeared immediate immediately and then i put his body down and then um matter of fact there was a point where the coroners came over because you have to call them and they got to come over and i kept checking and waiting for his body to get stiff and um we were laughing by then. We d- d- we just broke the tension and we laughed like, what w- what would he be saying right now, wherever he's at? And we're laughing to the point where when the corner showed up, we were laughing so hard. I went, hey, listen, he may be stiff by now, so if you need to chop off, you know, don't be offended if you chop the arms off. Or just don't make him. Like we were that hard laughing, but I was that detached. Mm-hmm. From that body, and they said, "Do you want to?" They were very sensitive. Like, "Do you want to?" We're about to take the potty out. Do you want to say any last words? I went, "No." Right. I went, "You know what? Yeah, I do want to." Co- you know what I did? Mm. I went in there, and before he got stiff enough, I just wanted to feel because every night I would just just his head. I give him a kiss on the head and feel his. He had this rock solid chimp head. And his chest, I'd always like give him a pat on the chest. Like, you're a good dad. You're good. I just wanted to feel that feeling, like as a boy, to feel your dad. Like, wow, this, this, right. that's my dad's chest, and that's a, that's the only thing I kind of, even though I knew he wasn't there, right. It was still the the physical part, but the body had no, no attachment, no attachment. I took a picture of it too. Yeah, you just showed me. I took a picture. I'm like, yeah, let me see. you want to see the picture, Jimmy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've seen bodies before. But yeah. sure. Brewer's a, to down. Brewer is a very special person. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know what that's... 
<laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, I mean, it's just a picture. This is so aggravating. How come on your phone when you when you have too many, like, <laughs> now I can't get it again. It's so freaking, when you have too many, um, god dang it. You got to go into your photos. I know. Go ahead. If you could figure it out, where's, let me know. Where's your photos, you little flower? Right, th right there. That's your or, camera. Where's your photos? Oh, I don't know. How do, you, uh, do this, maybe? Uh, hold on. I'm looking for Jim's uh, photo. I don't see any. Uh, hold on, pumpkin. I'm so looking for photos. You know, when you have too many. Oh, wow. What? Okay. So now how do I get to the camera roll? Go back. And then you can see uh, it should be one of those activity. Uh, let's see. Activity. Oh, those are shared streams. These are shared streams. I don't, ah, photos. Aha! Thank you, Jimbo. Sure. Here we go. Here you go, Jim. So this, even the skin color, man. Look at the skin color. Like this is leading up to it. All right. Still looks good. Bing to bing. Went from that to that, and then um, wow. almost the final stage, and then that's it. You see, yeah. bang right there. Bang, bang, bang. Mm. That was yeah. like moments later. You're no like, life. Like wow, that's just a uh, yeah. It's just a uh, yeah. And it's like just a mannequin. It's not a morbid photo. That's no, a photo of a, your dad dead. It's, yeah, it's a mannequin. Wow. It's yeah. wild. And then there's like a, that, that little bit of a smell. There's a little... I don't mean... I'm just saying. I'm just being like... Because people will go through it and be like, Oh, yeah, here comes the smell part. What was the smell? It, like, Death. Yeah. It's like you ever, you ever... In your house, you smell like a mouse. Like, oh, there's a mouse in a wall or something. Yeah. It wasn't that harsh, but yeah. it was like... Maybe a little poo coming yeah. out. It's usually a pussy I'm eating, but no yeah, poo. I know it's... <laughs> <laughs> God, is it true that the poo comes out? Uh, yes, but his poo already came out. His poo was already, and that's out. why they, that's why they said too. They're like, listen, he already pooed, so we're coming in the final stretch. Well, no, all right, he let his poo out, and his right. the pipes were clear, he's ready to go. How so. long before that did he actually die? After he pooped? Yeah, I'm gonna say it was. Uh, Let's see. It was Sunday, Sunday. Um, a day. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was at least so a day. You had to clean him up and get him. No, the nurses do that. I mean, the they do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a nice... That's a fucking hard job, man. Maybe a nice poo at the end of your life. Yeah, because I, I felt, you know, the hospice people, they call you. Ah. But even them, they're dealing with, they, they kept saying, like, you're dealing with this really well. Because I, I'm at a point in life where it's just, I know what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. I'm not going to. But you live, everyone, you've been living with this for a yeah, long time. Yeah, I've been living with it a long time, and I, you just know it's coming, and it's nothing you could do about it. Not so, to make it easier, but you've come in here many, many times thinking, you know, it was close to the end. Yeah. At so, least, I would say at least five years. At least. So I, I think about the, the hospice people. How many people do they see that aren't like me? They're like, oh, my God, don't you please save him another, make him him another day. Like, well, I'm telling you. Right. Yeah, you're like a dream to come in there. Uh, right. Like, this guy's talking about taking his limbs off. <laughs> <laughs> Wheeling them out. I like this guy. This is great. Uh, let's get Andrew on Long Island. Uh, Jim Brewer in studio. Andrew, what do you got, buddy? Hey, hey OB. Jimmy, Jim Brewer. What's going on, guys? Hi, Hello there, Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Brewer, I just want to say um, I'm, a, I'm a PA. I've called into the show a couple of times. I worked in long-term care and hospice, free medicine, and I, I got to say, I got to thank you because that, there are a ton of people who are going through what you went through. And, uh, and Opie, I don't know if you went through the same thing with your dad as far as hospital. No, no. But, he was in a coma right, well, from a car accident. So, uh -oh. Well, I mean, just, just, just the, the, what you're talking about, the fact of, like, having something like that. Uh, a guy at the end of his life led a great life, has family surrounding him. You know, going going in like a in a comfortable way, like you said. You know that that breathing thing that does that happens to everybody at the end. Yeah. And uh, you know when you come in there and now like as as a practitioner, you come in and you say, all right, you know we got to start pushing the morphine and right. You know that 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 you know that's us saying like, listen, you know, there's no reason for this guy to be in pain anymore. Like, you know, let's 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 kind of let let's let's make this as 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 comfortable as possible. And you were just saying like, you know, there are people who you know 
culturally they handle it differently. Like people scream and wail and no more, <laughs> right. you know, give them another, another second. But you know, and other people are just, uh, you know, okay, let's go. We got dad's hand and, and, and uh, let's, let's let him go wherever he's going. Let's let him go. Right. I got to say too, the good. Were you done? No, go ahead. No, go ahead. The, um, the hospice people, they, you could tell like they're psychologically reading me. Is yeah. this guy all right? Is he and I, and I kept saying, I swear to God, I'm all right. I just just give me the update. Like, what am I looking at? A couple hours, a day, and like, well, could be. A couple. And then as we got closer, I could tell the way she was looking at me, and she went, "Start giving him. How when are you giving the morphine? I went, it's once every two hours. She's like." Do it like every hour and yeah. push it from this milligram to that milligram. Yeah. And um, and then even afterwards, they called me twice, like even a day after. How are you doing? You okay? Right. Do you need anything? Because you should I have, have to tell you. answer and say, well, he's on the roof. Can you call you back? <laughs> 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 but I, I got to be honest with you. It made me want to... Like get more involved with it, it really made me want to get more involved with helping people in this situation where so many people have come out and said, I'm going through this with my dad and I fear being in the room. I fear right. watching them die. And so many people die alone because they're scared. Two of my kids didn't want anything to do with it. They didn't want right. anything to do with this situation. My little one was in there all the way to the last second. And it's yep. just when you when you take that on, you get a whole different respect and and you know you understand yeah, I, life. I think, you understand yeah, I, life. I think, I think that there are so many people who are going through your situation. They're they're really terrified of seeing a loved one in pain. I think that's a huge part of it. Right. That they're, that, that it's not even the letting go, it's just like I don't want to see, you know, I don't want to see him gasping for breath or, or like, you know, you know, reaching out, whatever it is. And, and, you know, unfortunately, sometimes that does happen. But that's when you get that morphine in there, you get that yep. support system. You know, people, that's what people are afraid of. I don't want to see my dad, my mom, my sister, whatever, in pain. Right. And that's, that's where we can help. I mean, and that's what this, this whole thing is all about. And if you can, I mean, what you're doing now is explaining to people out there, whoever's listening, that it's totally possible to go through this in a in a in a safe, normal. I mean, whatever you want to consider to be normal, but 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 a comfortable way for everybody. He also they would also explain because the first time I heard gurgling is when I went. He sounds like he's drowning. That the worst part is you hear like a and she, and, and they would explain. Listen, he's not drowning. There's a little flap. Uh, at the back of your in throat, back when, of throat, right, and and because he can't swallow, all you're hearing is just it's just it's just the phlegm mood. I swear to you, he's not drowning. Right. He's not in pain. Just add this, add that, and they explain to you step by step by step. And again, some people it's hard to go through, but when you realize, like, you're probably helping people by talking about it today, though. This is what it's it's. Oh, for sure. And you, and I'm telling you, I swear to everyone out there, the greatest feeling in the world is being able to hold on, listen to that last breath. Your 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 life is complete. You feel complete when it's, it's major closure. It's, it's major closure. such closure the rest of your life. I mean, it really is. And I I saw it even more at the wake. And at my house, and who's upset, and why they were upset, and I realized it's all just a psychological game. This one's so sad because they didn't. So many times they must have been home, going, "I should reach out, I should talk to him, I should go see him," I should, and they never did it. So now they're stuck with that. And this one is going, "I should have." It's all I should have, and I could have, and why didn't I? And and that that's the emotional torture. Right. Your relationship is complete. Hundred percent. You, you, there's nothing you should have done. No. Or nothing you should have said. No. You feel like you you had a complete relationship, and done. that's really important. Yeah. Oh, it's so important to people because you hear a lot of I wish I would have called them one more time, or yeah. I wish I would have went to let, a, let dinner people... with them one more time. I, I I never got caught up in that because if you do have a really good relationship with the person, right. it, it doesn't matter if you had one. One more call or one right, more. Right, but that's rest. how the meatheads. Uh, Unless, like you said, you didn't have that uh, right. complete relationship. So I guess that's where it I is. I would have been a little tormented if it happened on the road and it just happened suddenly. I would be like, you know what? Damn it. 
Really? I sh- yeah, a little. A little. That's uh, th- my biggest fear was just not being, being there. there. Okay. Because I d- that that was part of my torture too. Like, should I not go on the road as much, even though I have to? And that's how I make a living, and that's how I'm paying for his nurse, and that's how I'm. So you go through all. Some people don't have that opportunity, but I'm telling you, if you have the opportunity, don't fear it. I, take control and go for it. It's it's amazing. The human body. You know, the human body's kind of creepy because when I found out about my dad's car accident, I was actually in Boston and like get the fuck home. He's not going to make it through the night, and he ended up making it about two days. And I kept saying to everyone, he, he's waiting for everyone to to go there, dude. That I- is so fucked up because then when he saw everybody that he knew he was going to see. Then, then he died very quickly after that. Well, what I thought was That's interesting. That's bizarre. Well, what I thought was interesting was, and whether it's just coincidental or not. Right. Um, and maybe you can, what, what's this guy's name? Uh, Andrew. Andrew. Andrew, let me, Andrew. Sorry, Andrew, this, yes. This was, a, and again, it could have been coincidental. Um, he was coming into the last hour, and I said I wouldn't take a shower. Right. Uh-huh. And I didn't want to. I said, "Damn, I'm not leaving you. I'm staying right here. I'm staying right." Here. And I don't know if he was conscious or could have hurt hearing oh, anything no, or anything. Who knows? Right. Um, I finally, I said, "All right, I'm gonna take a shower." And I asked everyone, I'm "Like, please stay in there. I don't want him alone." When I left the room, and during that shower, is when the final. Mo- he then went into the last. You know, his eyes bulged open. And it's your body just leaving. His eyes were wide open, and he's like, <gasps> and you see his eye. It looks like he's being. It looks like you're. This is morbid to say, but it almost looks like you're dre- Like your eyes are wide open because your body's coming into the last moment. But yeah. it didn't happen until I left. Mm. And then uh, you know my daughter's like, "Hey, Grandpa, his eyes are open. His eye, he, he opened his eyes." And I realized he's either dead, or he's coming into the final stretch. And I came in. I'm like, "What'd you think you were gonna leave? No, 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 no. You're not going alone, stupid. I'm coming with you. You're coming with me." And I don't think he heard any of it from that moment on. You know, that's more for me, right? Well, you know, Bullet, I, I gotta say that I I've, I've seen that. You know, literally at this point, hundreds of times, and I can. It doesn't happen every time. I'm not going to say it happens every time, but there's so many instances, and this is where you get into the whole weird question of, of energy and yes. God and yes. science and all these different things. Where you know, we, we got a patient and they're on the ward, and you know, we all right, you know, let's listen, let's, let's call the family, and. You know, I pick up the phone to call the family, and like I'm like, oh my, God. like they're a half hour away. There's no way this guy's making it a half an hour. Right. And then you know, by some, I mean to use the term miracle, but whatever it is, you know, the guy makes it 31 minutes until his kids get there, yeah. and and then goes. Like I've seen that happen hundreds of times. So bizarre. So it's it is. It's really bizarre because medically, scientifically doesn't make any sense. Listen, right. I've also seen it the other way, where, you know, a guy's doing fine, and then all of a sudden, you know, two seconds later, it's Flat over, and you're calling the right, right, right. the other one. Right. Yeah. But, but it happens a lot. It definitely happens a lot. And I, I'm, again, like your dad, <laughs> you, you said, your father said, you know, those assholes that come back to tell us what's going on. Okay, so <laughs> it's true. You don't you don't know, but but there's, there, if you see it enough, there's, right. there's something there. There's I agree. Energy there. I agree. This is there's an energy there, and I'm telling you, even my one my ne- my nephew's wife who lost her mom t- and didn't went through this process, and she stayed in the room. She went. I'm telling you, he's waiting for you to leave the room. He doesn't want you to watch. He doesn't want right. you there, and not until. We left him alone. It was the first time he was alone. He jumped in the freaking shower is when his body, that's when he was like, body took off and he was ready to go. But uh, just, you know, thank God. I say thank God because I'm, I'm being that. I'm being selfish. I'm like, I don't care what he wanted. Right. I'm, I'm going to be, that's, you're not going alone. That's how, my, that's, how right. my, that's how my grandma died. She waited. We really, truly felt like she was waiting for everyone to get there. My, and we had people around the whole time in the room taking shifts. And she was the same type of person where she didn't, she didn't want to bother anyone. And then my uncle, I believe, was the last one to show up late at night, nine or ten o'clock at night. Stayed for about an hour, went home, and they said as soon as he fucking split is when she went. 
by, her, by herself in yeah. the middle of the night, knowing that come seven in the morning or whatever the fuck, six in the morning, there were going to be people in that room again. And, and you know, you had to know my grandma, but it's like, yeah, of course she waited to make sure she saw everyone and that uh, everyone was, you know, gone from the, from her room for her to do this. I don't know, but who knows? Who knows? I may or may not be there, depending on what else I have going on. Like if I have, <laughs> if I have other things to do, but I have people I'm going to hire to sit there and say company things. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, you don't think Jonathan's going to be sitting at the bedside holding your hand? I think my manager will be sitting there <laughs> applauding, waiting for me to go. <laughs> He'll be so happy to be rid of me. I'm finally done with this yeah. asshole. But Brewer, Brewer, I just at, at the end of the day. Even if you want to look at it as a selfish thing, because you, you can, it's, and it's okay, you can be selfish about it. Yeah. At the end of the day, you can say for you, not to whoever, your kids, your family, your mother, whoever, you can just say for yourself, I was there. Yeah. I was yeah. there when he went, and um, and we're good. Yeah, it's, it's a good. great feeling. It's such a great that's, feeling. That's huge, dude. That's so huge that you can do that. And I'm telling you, this conversation is going to help a ton of people out there. Well, I know it is. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Take but, it easy. Well, Dr. Steve is a hospice doctor. I, know, I don't Dr. know why Steve. he isn't calling in. He's probably laughing. He's a ghoul. This is his <laughs> This is his day. He's probably jerking off somewhere listening to this. <laughs> Let's go to Brian in New Orleans. Uh, Brian, Jim Brewer in studio. Being pretty fucking open and honest today. Again. We expect Isn't that all you have in life? Yeah, but then you got to deal with your family. Yeah, what's up, guys? <laughs> well, today I'm staying away from that. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Brian? Yeah, I've been listening a long time, man, and uh, first time calling in. But, but uh, Bru, I really appreciate you uh, sharing these private moments, man, because i got a grandmother in hospice right now. I mean, like literally waiting for the call any minute now. Mm. But uh, all the stuff you described, especially like with the gurgling, all that, mm. that, that really upset me the other day. <clears throat> and... Uh, at first, I thought it was like snoring, but then it got to be where it looked like she was really struggling. Right. They were, they were kind of telling me the same thing you said, but I didn't believe them. So. Right. No, and when you when you hear all these other people talk about it, and you realize, oh, it is. They're not just doing it for me. It real. This is this is the way it is. it's your body. It's just your it's your body, and they're not in you know they're not in pain. You're juicing them with the morphine, and it's just it's the extra stage where you but you got to remember. We're a living organism, and it's just like a flower, and the flower starts dying. It looks a certain way. The human body starts dying. The body reacts a certain way, and that's all it... Right. That's, that's yeah. what you're listening to. We're not used to hearing something like that, but trust that whoever's around them... She feels it. She knows it, whether you want to believe it or not. By the way, my well, we, got a, we, got a, we got a huge family, and there's like 50 people in the room all the time, all of them trying to be doctors, so it's kind of a pain in the ass. But, uh, you know, yeah, we, we appreciate it. Speaking of dying, Jimmy, uh, when are you going to come do a show in New Orleans? <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. I want to get down there and do it. And an excellent question and segue. <laughs> he wants an empty room. Is that what you're telling the people? Yes. I won't be funny until everybody leaves the room. No, no, my time. wants an empty room. Thank you, bro. Seriously, Norton, you're my favorite comic, dude. And I know it would be a lot cooler if I was a hot chick telling you that. But we need you down in New Orleans, buddy. Thank yeah, you, buddy. If you're a hot while, chick, right? I wouldn't recognize the compliment. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, my parents are listening. I love you, but do not expect the Jim Brewer treatment for me. I am not strong enough. I am the worst when people are in the hospital. I avoid it. No, you I, don't. I, no, it's a selfish. I'll go you, and I'll talk to them. You've been. But I'm not as good as I should be. And it's literally, I just can't, I cannot handle that stuff at all. I'm terrible. And I wish I was better at it. But what are you, what are you worried about? I don't want to cry in front of people. I'm a fucking blubbering jizz bag. So am I. I'm the worst. Oh my God, I'm the worst. But no, don't you, when you get to the hospital, don't, I take on, I take on the comedy. I go full blown. I go full blown because I always think my job is to deflect. Yeah, all right. They're they're stuck in this room. Like my sister has cancer. She's in the room. She broke her hip the other day. So I walked in. I'm like, thanks, thanks, asshole. You just you just we had horseback lessons this weekend, and I was going to surprise you. And it just goes one after the other. I got you a pogo stick, and we had a big just one right. after. And she eventually starts laughing and. 
you block it out and you keep them deflected. I would think you're brilliant. At no, that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I am so humorless in a hospital. You would think I installed insulation for a living. <laughs> 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 uh, let's, you would never can't guess. you show your picture? Look at, look at me at Stallone. Look at me in the lead singer of uh, no, Motorhead. This is me and Lemmy. Yeah, I'll wind up flicking on the wrong one. And here's my cock. And here's my cock again. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mom. Sorry, sorry. sorry, Mom. <laughs> Even though you took this one. <laughs> no, I'm terrible on those. I, I just shut down. I get too sad. I thought when, when Manny from the cellar was dying, I was just, I couldn't even look. I was so sad. But and you were in the room. I was in the room. Not when he died, but I mean when he was there. I was Close. actually with Geraldo was holding his hand. Mm. And uh, and Attell was being so fucking funny. I, mean, <laughs> I wish I could be like that. What was Dave, he saying? Just, I, 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 just I, being Dave. Of I just course, remember one course. thing. He was, he was having his floors done. And he brought a, a piece of the linoleum or something with him because he had gotten a floor sample. And he goes, well, I just have to try this out. And he put it against his face. And you knew that meant that he knew he was going to be drunk and pass out on the floor all the time. <laughs> and he just made me laugh. I'm like, that. he's a funny motherfucker. You still talk to him a lot? All the time. How's he doing? He's good. Dave's good. How's his, doesn't he take care of his mom? Yeah, his mom and he never really well. talks yeah. about that. Yeah, he mentioned that last time I saw a him. Little he bit. His mom has he's been going to. We flew home from uh, Montreal together. Yeah, and he's going to see his mom in uh, Long Island back and forth. Yeah, like Dave's did, also a dutiful son. I son. learned a lot about Dave on our tour. Right, and and, and it, Dave's one of those guys where I always. You know, every con everyone has deep respect for. Sure. But I'm always, I need his acceptance so bad for some whatever reason. And uh, I learned so much about him on that tour. Like, he talks about take care of his mother. Like, nobody knows this stuff about Attel. He's got this deep, passionate, like, beautiful, caring. Oh, no, we know about it. I yeah. never knew about he, it. He brings it on the show a lot. Oh, my God. I never saw it. Not a purpose, like, oh, it's time to pat him on the back, but he's just you, a you good can guy. See he has a caring heart. He's a really, like, well, that, good that guy. Is obvious. And that's, that, that, I've, to me, it actually shows through his humor. That's his, right. That's his shield. He's a good man. But yeah, I'm always, uh, since he told me that, I, I don't have. I always want to ask, like, "Hey, man, how's your mom doing?" So it's it's all good. I'll so give you uh, all right, let's go to Doctor Steve. He uh, he got the bat signal. Uh, Doctor Steve, <laughs> hospice talks work like fucking Viagra for you, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, no, it no, pumps no. me up. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> stay hey, away from the. I floor. just wanted to say to Jim, you know, I heard you talking about your dad through this whole thing, and Mad. Mad respect for you. You did stuff that uh, very few people still do these days. I'm really sorry to hear that he passed, man. Oh, it's it's part of life. What are you yeah. gonna do? I'm glad. Yeah, <laughs> to a degree, but thank you. Yeah. Well, it's um, yeah, and I, I hope the hospice experience was positive. I didn't get to listen. I, they, I've been absolutely slammed at work today. So. <laughs> you know, who, you know, <laughs> who you a lot of people are dying today. Like, oh God, yeah. You, I don't know what happened this weekend. Did you guys ever Jets. refer to him as you know? You know, he sound like who's who's a uh, Big Bird's friend. Mr. Snuffleupagus? Yes. I never noticed that. Maybe he does. He's totally Mr. Snuffleupagus. Wow. Hey, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Snuffleupagus. Hey, Jim. Hey, yeah, hey birds. I want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Had a tough day. Oh, fuck. You have no idea what you just started. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> hey, little Jimmy. Oh. I don't remember what Snuffleupagus sounded like. Like, I didn't know like he called. Him. Listen to him. Oh, uh, listen to he this. Written, listen I, when he called. I can't. And now listen to Snuffleupagus. It's the same. It's. I almost started cracking up his face. Like, hey Jim, <laughs> I didn't hear the whole conversation, <laughs> but I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think of that? You fucking hairy invisible elephant. <laughs> <laughs> he just made his life hell. I can't wait to check your Twitter later, Doctor. There you Steve. go. He's snuffle what, up, I guess. What could you add about I don't know the final moments of someone's life? I guess you oh, didn't yeah. have to really listen to to Brewer. But... It's actually an appropriate yeah. name for him, considering the first part of that is snuff. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of advice could you give the people? I mean, like someone like Jimmy does want to be in the room. Uh, you know, God forbid when the day comes, uh, one of his parents uh, pass. Well, it's a very private moment for some people, and.
and they, some people don't want everybody, you know, 20 people in the room with them. My, my mom was that way. She waited till I left uh, before she died, and I'm convinced that she did that because she was just a very private person, didn't want me around when it happened, you know? I believe that. So, <laughs> now, you know, my mom, not to be too do much it. of a downer, do she, do she do had do the it. worst do death it. I've seen to do this it. day. Your mom did? Oh yeah, yeah. That's it? why I'm. That's why I do palliative medicine uh, because her death was. They did everything wrong. Nobody knew how to make her better, and she was begging to to leave this world when she died. What did so, she have? Cancer. Yeah, she had stomach cancer. Oh. It was a weird kind called linitis plastica. Oh jeez. Uh, oh, she had uh, uh, like four different diverting ostomies, where you know she'd had bowel obstruction, so she had four different colostomies and uh, and small bowel, just you know oozing and just puking up fecal matter, and just you know, and and they were doing all the wrong things for her. And uh, when I had the one talk on end of life care that it, it, because we don't get that you know that that's one of the other things about this is boring okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh God, I'm, I'm in a I'm, I'm in a room with a bunch of doctors and nurses, and I'm cursing. But yes, I'm so it, sorry. It was terrible. Well, think about it though. We go from non-life to life. <laughs> we call that birth, and we have parties, and we have three different medical sure, specialties. Right. And then you go from life to non-life, and there's me. And there's you know, right. there's how sad. Me. <laughs> so how many how many times have you cursed your mom because of her death? You have to watch many many people die, basically. Yeah. Yeah, well, I just didn't want anybody else's mom to go through what mine did. Good know? for you. You know, so don't you say I was called to do it, so it's... it's don't say sorry. Right. Jesus, it's just a quick, dumb joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. It was actually fascinating, so... I'm sure. So I guess <laughs> I'm sure. When, you're, when your mom died, they just didn't know as much as they do now as far right. as hospice care and all that. Right. Yeah, no, there was no such. We did, we'd never heard of hospice. I mean, mm. the first hospice in this country started in 1967, so it's a relatively new thing to this to this country. And it was only in the last, say, ten years that it it completely covered the whole country, where there's you know everybody has access to hospice care. And uh, you know, ah, uh, oh, bird. <laughs> Can you look at Mister Snuffleup and give Sam please? <laughs> yeah, come please. on, let's hear it. <laughs> I can hear it. Yeah, Oscar has some. Oscar has some fluid in his garbage can. Play one voice of Snuffleupagus. Is there any voice over? He's like, "Hey, bird, tell us." Here we go. Wait. Hey, hey. This is where you went. This is potentially five minutes long, you know. <laughs> I know. I would, I would fast forward yes, to anybody there. Anybody else would have too. Or, there we go. Oh, he's singing. Right there. Oh, my, my house. house. Can you say for us, Dr. Steve? Yeah, find just him talking a video of him. Sam. I'm telling you, when he talks, hell, 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 I hear it. The, Hi, Bird. I like to visit all the dead people <laughs> on Sesame Street. I told Oscar he's got lymphoma. I'm <laughs> you, Brewer. I want to stand there with your last breath. Oh, the cookie monster's got type 2 diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Steve, you don't do the pillow thing, right? Huh? No. You don't do the pillow thing? No, What's the pillow the, thing? Over there? That's what I wanted to do. Angel of mercy. I said I was going to do that to my mom. Just stick the pillow right over, and I said, just ignore the flapping. <laughs> It'll be over soon. It'll be over in 30 seconds. So much quicker than morphine. Uh, so you're not really giving us much advice here there, Dr. Steve. Well, um, well you haven't asked me anything. That's a good point. I kind of did. Hold on. Here oh, wait, comes. He's on. Wait. <laughs> 
Here's a snuff hole. Oh, look. Not a figment of your imagination, people. The one and only Snuff Hole up against. And Snuff, we've had so many this. of the Sesame Street gang here throughout the years. Oh. This is your first time. Wow. Well, Welcome I back. thought it was time to finally meet my hero. George Stephanopoulos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I owe uh, you thanks, Snuffy. This You've is made a whole generation of a kids. Newer you know how to pronounce yes, it is a new one. Oh, this is a, we need like, like a new fangled fangled Snuffy. We need like the 80s, 70s. Yeah, that's like late uh, 70s. new Fred Flintstone. That's not the right. Hey, Barney. Uh, right. yeah, I'm telling you, it's that. It's that. Hey, bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stan, why do you keep finding the new Snuffleupagus? Because you like them. What the fuck is the matter with you? Snuffleupagus. Stop putting the computer off. Stop finding find a better snuffle off of you. Out of time now. Exactly. You got you got a question for Dr. Steve there, Brewer? Or uh, no, I'm good. Um, I'm, I'm sorry you went through that with your mom, but uh, yeah, I'm glad nice. what you do. Yeah. It's very nice what you do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, oh, what you asked was what can people do, and the, the the best thing you can do if you don't know what to say is don't say anything and just be there. Yep. You know, be just there. be there, birdie. Yeah, yeah. just be invisible. And don't let anybody see you except for one <laughs> special phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. Uh, oh, is this? All right, let's try this yeah, one. Yeah, but he may be singing. Don't give him when he's singing. Singing. I'm That's singing. what he does. They just play him singing. Why the Why are you playing? That's not it. That's wrong. What the fuck are you playing? It's an opera. You keep playing stuff. What? No, any other questions for Dr. Steve? I guess he wasn't needed today, after all. Dr. Thanks for Steve. calling. Me. That was nice. Yeah, you know. I'm always a big Dr. Steve call guy. It was we, nice. We like the Dr. Steve. Yeah. What do you got going on now, Dr. Steve? I broke my foot. Doing what? Oh, I, uh, my wife uh, won't let me turn the light on if, if she's already in bed, and so I've rounded the corner about a thousand times and. And uh, this time I cut it a little bit too short and uh, <laughs> smashed my foot right into the bed post. And you'd be amazed the amount of force that just normal walking, uh, in you know, or is involved in normal walking when you smash your foot directly into the corner of a bed post. How bad do you want to knock her teeth in? Uh, well, I was in the corner going, oh, 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 and all I heard was, can you be quiet over there? Really? <laughs> oh, Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I busted my uh, third metatarsal of my foot, and I've got a cast on. So and I, I'm and I'm he metatarsal a kid, once he wasn't very nice. Take, <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> so that's my fascinating. That was a wonderful story. Yeah, I know. It was it's wonderful. wonderful. I'm punching out. All right, All right. thanks, Steve, very much. Okay, boys. Riotcast, whatever. What do you? What do yeah, you weird medicine on Riotcast. Also. Uh, Sometime on Saturday night on uh, XM 103. All right. Thank I think you. it's 10 p.m. All right, All right, Dr. Steve. Take care. All right, buddy. Okay. There he goes. Bye. Good old Dr. Steve. Yeah, that's what he does for a living. Hospice. He's a hospice guy. Yep. He's like a Patch Adams. Yes, he is. Kind of goes in and makes. I, I, I didn't like that movie until I found out it was actually a real guy. <laughs> really? Patch Adams is a real guy, so it didn't bother me as much. Is this uh, going to be uh, his voice? Sam? Let's, comment? Let's go. Oh, let's see. Ah, uh, you're warm. Are you up in this tree, slimy? <laughs> you're warm. A little bit. Yeah. I like that. A little bit. Now it's fast yeah, motion. So. Slimy. slimy. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's slimy. see, Kevin in North Carolina. Kevin. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I tried. I, I just got a quick story about uh, the whole timing thing and the death of my, mm -hmm. my old man. So... He was in palliative care, hospice care at the Detroit Veterans Hospital for, for quite a while. And uh, he was doing that breathing thing, and I thought, man, I, I want to go get some beer, and this is going to be it. So I'm going to sit here and just drink some beer, get drunk, and, and he's going to go while I'm sitting here. So I go to the store, get some beer. I get back to the parking garage. I, I roll a joint. I sit there, and I smoke it. Uh, about half hour, 45 minutes goes by. I come into the hospital. I'm, I'm getting off the elevator. This nurse stops me, and he's like, hey, really sorry about what happened to your dad. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, oh, you didn't know? They're like, he he died about, you know, 20 minutes ago. Oof. So he, I'm sure you have no he, guilt over that. <laughs> a joint was more important. Yeah, that's good. Cool. You're sitting in the park, like, getting high. <laughs> <laughs> Let's the dark the side hospital. of the moon. <laughs> What's that? I, I'd been in the VA hospital with him for, like, six months. So, I mean, he was in ICU for four months palliative care for for like a month so i mean come on you know, he didn't I, want to go in front of you yeah he didn't want to go in front of you we're making our That's jokes a soldier i think your point is that he kind of waited for you to get the fuck it's out a of the soldier room. yeah, yeah he waited for you to get out of the room it was crazy yeah right. it's a soldier 
Right on. Go on without me. Right. Go yeah, on without me. Uh, there's no happier place than the Detroit Veterans Hospital, by the way. Oh, it doesn't sound very happy. Are you going to have a 41? You still going to have the bachelor party? Why are you? Why are you still having it up? I don't have it up. Who's? For real, I don't have it up. Why are you listening to Bill Burr clips right now? Because somebody, one of our staff members sent this to me. I wanted to hear it. And then it When did work. Bill shave his head? A while ago. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, Is his head ago. shaved now? I don't know. I think Bill lost his mind at one point. Is that what he looks like now? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Last time we saw him in Montreal, he had a hat on, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. I think it's head shaved. Yeah, maybe. Still shaved? Yeah. So. He's trying to grow it another color. Yeah. Uh, let's say hi to John in Jersey. John? Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, right. um, and, uh, I lost, uh, lost my father about six months ago, and uh, I was in the room with him, and uh, it's been torturing me for about six months until uh, I was in a brewer here. And I uh, really appreciate it, man, all the honesty that you've been... Uh, Throwing on the radio the last couple of weeks, I really respect you and I really appreciate it. No problem. Wow. What, what, what are you feeling guilty about? Yeah. Uh, not guilty. It's just you know, yeah, yeah. I haven't been able to think about it for six months. He died on his 68th birthday. Mm. Had a balloon up uh, in his bed there, and uh, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's torturing, man. You know, we, he was in there for uh, he was in a drug-induced coma for three days, and uh, I was just stuck in that room for you know three days. And uh, right. Right. And it was torturing, man. But, you know, thank God I was there. You know, I mean, what the fuck? You know, he's my father. You know? Right. He did all that shit for me. What the fuck? That's I'm right. Up and stand there, you know? That's right. And you feel so, better uh, you were there. And it's just, you know, yeah. it's part of, you know, we, we're, what, we're so petrified. I mean, yeah, it sucks. We all want to live forever. But at the end of the day, we realize you're going to be fucking dead one day. No matter what. Your kid may be dead. Your fucking aunt may be dead. It's part of life. It's just, if we could kick ass at everything else, why can't we kick ass and accepting and understanding that? We should understand it more. It's just a part of it. But it does suck. Yeah. It does yeah. suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say, this is the greatest thing ever. Right. I tell you, I'm so fucking glad I got to see that idiot anymore. Yeah. It sucks, but when you're complete, yeah. you feel better. All right. I'm sorry, yeah. Hammer. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thanks for uh, Thank you so much. calling the show today. Let's say hi to, uh, wow. Man, you got him talking today, bro. Brian in Missouri, what's up? Hey, guys. Just wanted to talk about uh, <laughs> I was sitting at home, and I heard the news about Jim and his dad. So sorry to hear about that, Jim. Yeah, no um, problem. <laughs> but I look over at my wife, and I tell her, because we're big fans of yours. Okay. Just, uh, just such, such a look on her face when she heard that, that, that your dad had passed. And the first thing she said, oh, my God, we've got to get him some flowers and a card. Uh, I, said, I, I said, sweetheart, <laughs> there, there, there's, there's millions of people that, that, that heard about this, and, and he is not going to be uh, that up on getting a card and some flowers from a couple in Missouri that he's never heard of. You know, you know what I've been doing? Uh, oh, anyone that really, and I think I put it on my website, anyone that feels the need to do something, I said make a donation to Wounded Warrior. Because he he okay. Okay. he was all about that. So, literally, people came over and I said, "Please don't st listen. We've got we've got a florist shop here, and we have more food. I I had to send food to a uh, freaking poor countries for the amount of food we had. So stop standing stuff. Donate to the Wounded Warriors. If well, you if you really feel like you got to do something, donate to the Wounded Warriors or families of veterans. Or, or, or if you feel like this couple here, you wanted to send flowers, I'm sure Jim, <laughs> nude photos of your wife to Jim Norton would make Jim Brewer feel really better. Because you'd know you'd be helping one of Jim's friends. <laughs> All right, question out, guys. Let's say hi to Matt in Jersey. Matt. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, buddy. Hey, um, uh, I'm 19 years old. I'm a uh, college student, and uh, over the summer, I actually had to pull the plug on my mom. Oh, 19. Uh, it's kind of the opposite uh, opposite story that you guys are talking about. It was very sudden. The uh, hospital actually had to do a case on her because she died within 24 hours of being admitted. What was wrong with her? Uh, well, she, I mean, her health was, wasn't the greatest. Uh, she struggled with alcohol for a while, mm. so, her, uh, so her liver wasn't at that great of a shape, but she... Um, she was clean for three years, and she was doing so good, and uh, she actually was available for a, a new treatment that would have cured her uh, liver um, disease over the summer. So um, it was right before that was supposed to happen, and uh, she she got a stomachache Wednesday night, and Thursday morning she wasn't feeling so good, and then Friday morning my dad called the ambulance, 
And um, from there, it was just a hot mess. She wow. couldn't breathe because of the pain in her stomach. Then they had to put a mask on her, and then eventually we had to um, induce her into a coma uh, Friday night. And then Saturday morning, uh, we got the coma. There was, there was going to be no recovery, and uh, we had to pull the plug. And so uh, that was really hard. But um, I, I remember right before we pulled the plug being in the room, and the doctors, of course, were like, do you, have to, do you want to be there or do you not want to be there? And I was I don't know what to do. You know, I'm like 19 years old. I've never experienced anything like this before. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And so I eventually came down to um, me, me doing it. So I wanted to stay there and watch. And um, they had me leave the room for just, uh, for just a couple of seconds. And then... Um, Why? They, I, I don't know. They had. They said they had to prepare something or do something. And I'm not sure, but um, it actually. She actually went right then. She, uh, we didn't have to pull the plug. Hmm. So the timing was. Um, I guess it was kind of. Yeah. Because yeah, she, she probably knew you were struggling with that decision. Probably. Yeah. You walked out of the room. Yeah. And had a gunshot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus! Um, Wouldn't it be great if they actually came allowed, in you to, shot, right. allowed you to pull a giant? <laughs> well, I don't know if I could do that, but I can listen yeah. to someone else go in, yeah, and maybe do that like a dog. But this this guy, I give you a lot of credit for t t a whole different reason because I can relate Going to, to the college, right? <laughs> 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 the fact that he, he knows his mom was an alcoholic. That's already a struggle for a kid. I, I watch it. I, I gotta be very careful my words. I've watched it. Uh, I've seen it before. And no, it, we we had a whole bunch of struggles uh, the last year just because um, I was supposed to go to wait to college the other year and uh, we didn't have enough money. Mm. And then mm. I had to go to. A, I started lashing out on her and I had yep. to go to a psychologist. Mm. And then she said that I had a whole bunch of resentment towards her. Yeah. I ended up I'm moving out of my house to. Um, my then friend's house, now my girlfriend's house, uh, and I moved into her house, and um, I don't know, I just, I went through a whole bunch of problems with, like, resentment towards her, and I uh, still have a lot of, um, you know, uh, yeah. you know yeah. I just, I, I struggle with that, Yeah. but um, towards the end, we, we had a really good relationship, and I came to terms with what happened, and, you know, what her addiction was, and then... Um, I, we had, a, like, the, the Sunday before, I actually took her to go see her favorite show in New York, and it was, that was a nice... What was her favorite show? Yeah. Ca oh, Cabaret. Oh, God. Cabaret nice. was Alan Cumming, and it was, a, it was actually really cool. They did the original production, and they just redid it with so you, all the same... So you went songs. through hell twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, no, yeah, but... And then, well, I, I, like at the, I just wanted to, uh, to comment on the whole like uh, spirit thing. Is that when I went back into the room and I uh, like I was there with her. I mean, I I had no idea. Twenty four hours previously to that, I had no idea that I was going to be losing my mother. So I didn't. I wasn't so relaxed as you guys were. Mm. But um, in the back of my mind, I definitely I I could tell that it was just not her. And then at the week. Like, I thought the wake was going to really bother me a lot, yeah, yeah. but it had no effect on me whatsoever. Like, yeah. seeing her in that casket, yeah. I had, and, like, everybody was like, how are you so cool? And, of course, I was going to be like, well, it doesn't affect me. So, of course, I was like, yeah, I'm just a little numb from everything. But the body literally yeah. had no effect on me. When, yeah. when my grandmother like, died, people thought that uh, they saw her spirit in the room. Come on. But th no, it turned out it was just one of the nurses had put a sheet over her head and was going, ooh. <laughs> wow. Good story, man. Yeah, man, that was awesome. And, Thanks, man. And I, I love his whole thing with the struggle of uh, people have, you know, alcoholism and the mothers, and it's, it's not personal. When you read the, the hardest thing for a kid to deal with is the fact that his mother or father cannot fight their own addiction and they'll struggle till they're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old 
and always choose the addiction over everything. And that's really hard for a kid to deal with. And when you realize it has nothing to do with you, it's so much easier to accept and be like, all right, you know, this is... This person's got a problem. It has nothing to do with me. When you realize it has nothing to do with you, it's a lot easier. But that's a major struggle with people. You're at peace at that point? Yes. All right. A couple more. We got Jesus. What are we st- we're heavy, on at noon? Heavy. We're almost Holy done. We're almost bonkers. done. Uh, cigars and scotch. <laughs> <laughs> You started this. Well, I know. Well, <laughs> then we're going to have fun today. What the fuck? All right, good. Uh, cigars and scotch. Hey, Dr. Steve isn't Mr. Snuffleupagus. He's Mr. Snuffleloved One. <laughs> right. right. okay. Mr. loved One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Brewer's right, but two more calls. That's fine. And then we'll, we'll get out of here, I guess. Frank in New York. Frank. Hey, guys. Uh, hey, Brew, I'm actually from Roseville. Nice. Oh, I hated you. Yeah, and me, you. Uh, the uh, about five years ago, uh, I lost my mom. Uh, she she was in the hospital and and died from complications of surgery. Oh. Um, I, I was uh, she she had been sick a long time. She had uh, taken two medications that that killed her liver. That and uh, and she was a mess. She was a mess for a long time, and she she lived with my wife and I for the, the past uh, the last two years of her life. And um, so I really empathize with what you went through with, with, with your dad, man. It, it, it really resonates with me. Yeah, you felt better. She was home in your house, and you could see her and all that. And Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, my daughters were, were so close to her at the end that, uh, you know, that, that, that's, that's something great that, you know, that never would have happened otherwise. And you did it because you wanted to do it. There's, there's another thing where people... I, I, nah, I'm not going to get into it. Well, you, you know, bro, I, I they got you. There's no one else. <laughs> no one you. else would. No one else would. Right. 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 You know, I, I I got you know two brothers, two sisters, and and they have better you know the the means to do it better than I did, but. But at the end of the day, that's another thing. It doesn't even mean the means or the time, whatever. You knew you could do it better. You knew you would, and you're doing it because it's you feel it's the right thing. Absolutely, and and she paid me back. She paid me back in full, man, because uh, the night she passed, uh, I was working down in Manhattan, and my wife called me, and she said, you know, you need to come home. It's time. And I flew back up to Poughkeepsie, went to the hospital, my, and from my wife's perspective, she said she heard the elevator door ding. My mom took a deep breath. Mm. I came up to the bed. I kissed her on the forehead, and she exhaled her last. Oh, man, that's great. Dude, that's I, I, awesome. I, it is, isn't it? It's yeah. awesome. Why is it awesome, though? It's yeah. awesome, man. He comes in, and his last, his last right. moment is giving her a kiss right. goodbye. That's fucking beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah, fucking I, beautiful. Most deaths are probably not that smooth. The game's probably on. And then, you know, <laughs> and, and, well, we're not sure how much longer he's going to be around. The ball gets dropped. Fucking Jets. Boom. <laughs> and, and Drew, even though you're from Valley Stream, I love you. Man. Same here, Rosedale. All right, one more call. Thank you, sir. Uh, we go to New Mexico. Ray. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hi, Ray. Hey, Ray. Hey, listen, my mom died of the liver disease, too, but she wasn't a drunk. She just got it just out of nowhere. But anyways, they call me on a Friday morning and say, you need to get back to L.A. So I drive back home. I get there. It's Friday. She doesn't die until the following Friday. She goes through that whole week with hospice suffering. By Thursday, her legs are already, like, like straight, like, hard as a board. So Friday, I find I don't leave her sight, her sight for the whole week. Friday, I tell my wife, let's go get something to eat. I go to the restaurant. I order my drink. The phone call comes. Mom just died. That whole week was hell. I didn't leave. I finally leave because I get hungry from something different from all the crap people are bringing over. And she died. So oh, wow. I just don't think it was meant for me to be there. Yeah. You know, sure. I just think my mom wanted, and she died after her novella, which is a Mexican um, soap opera type of thing. And and her sister was there, and my older sister was there, and that's who was supposed to be there at the end of the day. That's how I got through it. Dude, but when she died, I felt the same way, guys. It wasn't her. You know what I mean? Right. I didn't, 
The whole week I cried my ass off, like it was terrible. But once he died, I didn't cry after that until about a month later. I was driving in my truck and I started falling like a baby. Yeah, I've so had you know those. I, yeah. I had li little tiny moments like that. Little, I, I've had one moment since then. But it's you feel like they're safe and they're somewhere else. Yeah, and, and then and then you re you you cry because the missing, the missing of oh my god, I'm never going to be able to do that. And you have tiny moments like that. You have little moments here and there with a song or. I, you know, yeah. but you just yeah, realize this is a shit vessel. Yeah. In the end, he's pointing at his head. The whole hospice thing is kind of weird, though. Like, like, like how you were saying they try to talk to you and ask you how how you're feeling and stuff. Yeah, that was. I I thought the chick was trying to pick up on me for a second. Oh, that's I'm so, so funny. Of myself, I was like, just, just trying to. <laughs> that's a guy <laughs> thing. I know. That's a guy thing. Oh, she likes me. She wants to see how I'm doing. Any yeah. woman that gives you any tiny bit of attention, like not even she attention. Wants me. They every nurse that came over gave me such passion. Right. Like they were so caring. You swear it was your sister or your best friend. But that's their job. Yeah. Their job. Hey, check this out real quick. They sent this guy over, and he thought he was a good-looking guy. He was a good-looking guy. So my mom had this little dog, a little freaking dog called Frankie, like a wiener dog, whatever they're called. Uh. Yeah. And he was putting the dog up to his face, and we said, that dog will pike. He said, no, he won't. Frankie bit that dude right through his lip, and he was so pissed off, we told him, the fucking dog's going to bite you. And it was hilarious, man. I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> so I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. 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 Pit bull. Thank you, buddy. I guess that's Thanks. it. That was fun. Brewer sharing. Wow. Yeah, that was good. I like to give tough medicine. Yeah, sure. That was good. Like what, Jimmy? Just if someone tells me something like, uh, you know, ah, my mom's sick. I like to go, cry me a river. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good Johnny Cash song. Yeah. Yes. We should play a song. Hmm. What should we play? Um... Play Johnny Cash song. Yeah, which yeah. one? What, did your dad have a one one that he liked? Oh my God, he liked a whole bunch of them. He like he loved uh, Man in Black. No, he loved. Um, uh, you know what he liked? A ma a boy named Sue. Good one. Really? You don't even know that song? Sure. Of course we do. Man named Sue. I mean, he liked all of them. False in Prison Blues. He loved uh, How yeah. High's the Water, Mama. Three feet high rising. <laughs> I mean, boy named know. Sue. We'll do that. Is there any? Is any bad cash no. song? No, not I, I learned that from uh, Jim Norton. There isn't. I just knew a few of the hits back in the day, and then uh, do you know what song? He had a lot of fucking. Go, what, 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 you that? know what song beat the shit out of me huh. when it, it was towards the end because I was just playing Johnny Cash songs, and I heard his remake of the song Hurt. Hurt? Oh yeah. Oh my. You never heard that before? I did, but I never really listened to the words. It's too depressing of a song. <laughs> yeah. It's such a depressing <laughs> song. I, but I, I, the whole, what I love, what it resonated with, it's just like, take my empire, take all I have, my whole empire of dirt. We're going to play that today. Dirt. We're going to play that today. That was I, a heavy song. Can I tell you a very quick story? So, yeah. my, my uncle dies way too fucking young, young, drops dead of a heart attack while snow blowing, right? My sister comes up from Florida and she's very emotional. Just yeah. Very emotional, Your right? Your sister. My sister. Okay. And, and that song was out. Oh, God. And then it was on TV and stuff. Cash version? Yes. Oh, which is a Brutal. deep fucking song. Oh. But I'm digging it on some weird emotional level. Oh. I, 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 I kept playing so it. So was I. Okay. So was so I. So she comes in like, hey, guys, what are you listening to? I'm like, oh, you got to hear this. It's right? raw. <laughs> so I, I think that she can maybe handle it with, with stupid on my part because well, she's very emotional. So well, I put it on. She is within seconds yeah. on the floor in the fetal position. Dude, you should play. Out. You should play that one first. Like, the, one of my one I of my mean nephews. To do it to her, no, but one of my. I'm listening to that song, and I was really. It was probably a couple hours before, and I knew it was coming. Right. And I heard the. I'm listening to the words and the way Johnny Cash is singing it, and I know he's probably around the same age as my dad. I'm going, oh, my, like this is as raw and real as you can be as a human I, talking about life and death. And I didn't cry. It's like. Wow, that's wow. Right. More people should hear right. that one and just make you think. So I played that. <laughs> All I remember is that song's playing at my at my house. You know, everyone's and my one nephew's just sitting there with a Johnny Cash shirt, and he's sobbing. 
yeah, he, he said, uh, 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 what's the matter? He goes, this song. I went, yeah, it's a real fucker, ain't it's it? Heavy. Just, but he's, he, you know, he sat there, he sobbed for nine hours. <laughs> but I, he literally, like, went to the ground listening to the song. But I should have realized my sister can't handle that. She came in all innocently. Oh, God, it's like trying to what's forget. song? Trying to forget why she was up from Florida. For, she was up for the wake and all that. Yeah. And she comes in the room, and I should have said, oh, don't worry about it, and turn off the music. I'm like, oh, you got to hear this. That's what I just said. you got to listen to this song by Cash. It defines everything. One of his things. You know how I make that song not sad for me? Huh. Like, when I think, like, instead of hurt, that he's saying height. Height? Yeah. Height. That ruins the song. I height myself. <laughs> That's ruined it for everybody. I height. I height I myself. Height. What do we got? We got we're going to play the song as we get out of here. Jim Brewer. Dot com for tour dates, DVDs. Well, this books, weekend, we're going to be this weekend, Jim. Sarah McCurdy's new comedy theater, and then I'm on that Motorhead cruise. And then I do a whole, I don't know, Turtle Lake, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Royal Oak Theater, Peoria. A lot of places I never played Peoria, before. Peoria, who's the from? I know. Are that you, I know. Are you working in uh, your dad's thing yet? What do you mean? Like, about his death? No, I haven't. I've you, only been on stage once since then, so I haven't really found the... But the brilliant, the brilliance of you, you will. I, I don't even have to ask you. I know you will, and you'll make it yes. beyond funny and, 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 and thought-provoking, too. So, you know. Sure. It's That's, just take me a little time. But, yeah, I'm definitely going to work yeah. on it on this trip. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the brilliance of Jim Brewer, his storytelling is second to none for real. It's unbelievable. Um, next year, I'm going to do a storytelling tour. You should. Sarasota, Florida this weekend at McCurdy's Comedy Theater. The, uh, Friday and Saturday, it looks like. Okay. And uh, Norton's got a bunch yeah, of Yeah, I'll, I'll well. do only three. I'll be, in, um, I'll be in Columbus this Friday, this Thursday through Saturday. Great room. I love the Funny Bone. Funny area. Bone's a great room. Great area. This Thursday through Saturday. And then uh, Stress Factory, October 2 through 5. Is Vinny going to open up for you? I hope so, because the old phone call thing gets everybody. No, I, I don't know. Vinny usually does, but they usually have somebody else in front of me. Right. And then uh, Levity Live, my first time there. Here, that's a good room. Oh, really? 16th, 17th, and 18th. I've never been there before. Great place. You'll like that room. Yeah. I saw you up there. Yes. As a matter of fact, I, it's I a great a whole, place. I have a whole routine about Nyack. <laughs> Here's uh, I hoit myself. Brewer, oh, always it's a brutal. pleasure, brother.